Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a mono green deck I like to call Dryad Food, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. It's a crossover episode between the Throne of Eldraine food synergies and the Theros Beyond Death enchantment synergies, featuring the full playset of Dryad of the Legion Grove, which lets us play an additional land on each of our turns. Our deck is pretty mana hungry, and we're even playing 26 lands total to also make uh, use of the Dryad's ability to play extra lands, and we've got plenty of mana sinks in the deck to make use of all those extra lands we get to draw and play with the Dryad, and of course the Dryad also an enchantment for our various constellation synergies, and at the core of the deck we are also a Citizen Champion deck, which with the constellation ability puts a plus one counter on it and draws an additional card, and besides Citizen Champion we also have the full playset of Nessian Wonder as another constellation card, that whenever we play an enchantment we can look at the top three cards of our library, reveal a land from among them, and put it into our hand, and the rest goes on the bottom in a random order. So between the Wanderer and the Champion, we've got some nice card draw engines that reward us for playing enchantments. So of course we've got a bunch of enchantments to go with them. We've got the full playset of a Destiny Spinner, 2 mana for a 2-3 enchantment creature, that makes our enchantments and creatures uncounterable, as long as the spinner is in play. And then the activated ability for 4 mana can turn a land we control into an XX elemental creature with Trample and Haste until end of turn, where X is the number of enchantments we control. So this is perfect for helping us close out the game once we've accumulated a lot of lands in play and a lot of enchantments, since sometimes we can end up uh, almost drawing our entire deck and then we are in desperate need of something that can close out the game in a hurry and we usually have plenty of enchantments in play by that time so that the spinner can uh, end the game with one or two activations. And then we also have the full playset of Trail of Crumbs, which is kind of where the crossover really happens between the food synergies and the enchantment synergies, a two mana enchantment that when it enters the battlefield creates a food token, which we can sacrifice at any point for two mana to gain three life, but for the most part we're going to be using that food token in combination with Gilded Goose or Wicked Wolf, which are our food uh, synergy cards from a Throne of Eldraine, and then whenever we sacrifice a food token we can pay one mana, and if we do look at the top two cards of our library, you may reveal a permanent card from among them and put it into our hand, rest goes on the bottom, and every single card in this deck is a permanence, of course lands are permanence, but all our creatures and enchantments are permanence as well, so we can never miss with uh, Trail of Crumbs, so a great mana sink and way for us to draw extra cards in combination with Citizen Champion and Nessian Wanderer, so these are kind of the card draw engines of the deck. And then we also have the full playset of Wolf Willow Haven, which can enchant a land, and the enchanted land adds an additional green mana to our mana pool whenever we tap it. Can also sacrifice the Haven for 5 mana to make a 2-2 Wolf token. Doesn't come up a whole lot, we're happy to keep the Haven as an enchantment in play, so it counts towards the land for uh, the Destiny Spinner, so it's a little bit bigger. Then we've already covered the 3 mana cards, Citizen Champion and Dried, and then the final enchantment in the deck is 2 copies of Nylia Keen-Eyed, 4 mana for a 5-6 legendary enchantment creature god with indestructible, so at first it's going to be an enchantment sitting in play, making creature spells we cast cost 1 generic mana less to cast, giving them a bit of a discount, and for 3 mana we can also look at the top card of our library, reveal it, and if it's a creature card we can put it into our hand, otherwise we can decide to put it in the graveyard instead, but as soon as our devotion to green is at least 5, meaning the total sum of green mana symbols on permanence we control is at least 5, Nylia turns into this 5-6 indestructible creature that can start attacking and blocking, and of course no shortage of uh, green devotion in this deck since we have so many permanents, and Nylia also makes for a nice mana sink if we have a lot of lands in play, we can just activate the ability a bunch and find all our creatures in the deck. And then looking at some of the food synergies in the deck, we've already covered Trail of Crumbs, which also plays well with Constellation. We've got the full playset of Gilded Goose, one mana for an O2 flyer, comes into play with a food token and can sacrifice food tokens to add mana, and can also generate food tokens for two mana, so also nice mana sink in the late game and then can ramp us into a turn 2 Citizen Champion or Dried, which is quite strong, since going turn 2 Champion and then turn 3 potentially play some cheap enchantments, can even go turn 3 Haven into another 2 mana card, can draw us a lot of cards with Champion, so this is the type of card that we want to get in play as soon as possible, and the Gilded Goose really helps with that. 
And then besides Goose and Trail of Crumbs, we also have the full playset of Wicked Wolf, which is a main removal spell in the deck. 4 mana for a 3-3 creature that when it enters the battlefield, fights up to one target creature we don't control, but in response to the fight we can also sacrifice a food token if we want to, or multiple food tokens to put a plus one plus one counter on Wicked Wolf. For each one of them it gains indestructible until end of turn, and we also have to tap it. So the wolf in combination with food can be very hard to deal with for a lot of decks, and Wolf also pairs quite nicely with Trail of Crumbs, since it gives us access to a free way of sacrificing food tokens. So if we have a bunch of food tokens lying around, and we just want to use the Trail of Crumbs to find more action, we can just sag them to the Wolf, and then pay one mana for each food token we sacrifice for each Trail of Crumbs we control, since of course Trail is also great in multiples, and then use that uh, to find more action. So that way we're not forced to pay the two mana to sacrifice the food token manually. Of course Gilded Goose also pairs well with the Trail of Crumbs there, since we can uh, sacrifice a food token to make mana with a goose, which pays for the activation of Trail of Crumbs, so that's another neat combo. And then taking a look at our mana base, we've got 22 basic forests alongside 4 copies of Gingerbread Cabin, which comes into play untapped as long as we control 3 or more other forests, Cabin itself also counting as a forest, and when a cabin comes into play untapped we get to make a food token, so more synergy with the Wicked Wolf, the Trail of Crumbs, and the Gilded Goose. And by having these lands that kind of generate a bit of value, we also make our Nassian Wanderer that much better, since we can of course prioritize finding the cabins to uh, make food tokens when we have the Constellation trigger from the Wanderer. And uh, yeah, can't underestimate how valuable a food token is in this deck, between all these food synergies that we have. And because we're playing for cabins, we're not playing any copies of Castle Garenbrick, which doesn't count as a forest, so that we maximize our chances of having three forests in play by the time we play the cabin, so we get to make that food token, otherwise a castle would still be quite valuable at helping us uh, play multiple creatures in the same turn. So we are playing 26 lands total, which may seem like a lot, especially in a deck with 4 copies of Gilded Goose, but by playing all these lands we also make our Dryad better, and we have access to more mana when we need to activate our Trail of Crumbs, and Dig for Action, and of course great with Nylea, and all the extra cards we draw from Satessan Champion, so this deck really doesn't want to miss a single land drop for the rest of the game. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with uh, an acceptable hand, so we've got some of our key cards here in Satessan Champion and Dryad. Don't have the turn one goose to really make this hand perfect, but uh, still have a couple options here going into the first couple turns. Probably okay to play Haven on turn two. And then I'll probably prioritize playing Champion before Dryad to get the Constellation trigger. Up against Sultai. Could see some hand disruption here instead of Fae of Wishes, okay. Yeah, I mean, I could wait on the champion until I can play an enchantment alongside it in case they end up killing it. Highest upside is playing champion, have it survive, and then next turn go dry it into Trail of Crumbs. It's gonna be a turn 3 Risen Reef. Could play the Nassian Wanderer here before the Trail of Crumbs. That seems okay. So we'll attack for two and then play the Wanderer. Now our opponent might have been missing black mana for, let's say, Murder Strider, which they can now maybe play. So we potentially give up on a bit of value from Sedestin Champion, but at this stage of the game a land is still a pretty good draw since we've got Nylea to make use of that mana, the Trail of Crumbs. And there we see Cavalier of Knights taking out Champion. So the trigger from Nessian Wanderer and the trigger from Satessin Champion is uh, almost equivalent, of course, prefer the Champion one, but uh, the one from the Wanderer is still pretty good. And of course if they didn't kill our creatures we got maximum value by doing it this way. And Gingerbread Cabin's a fine pickup. And we should have enough devotion for Nylea to be a creature too. Now we don't have a Wicked Wolf or a Gilded Goose, so we'll have to sag these food tokens manually to enable the Trail of Crumbs.
Nightmare Shepherd, pretty scary. So really want to find a Wicked Wolf here. Ooh, Neoform sacking Risen Reef. What does it get? Alright, Thassa Deep Dwelling, pretty good with Cavalier of Knights. Also triggers Risen Reef, since Cavalier is an Elemental. And takes out Dryad, presumably. Alright. We'll untap, not our Dryads. So I've got some options. I can activate Nylea, I can sack food to the trail. One food token in play is still enough for the Wicked Wolf to kill the Shepherd, which is probably the priority here. And I've got a higher chance of finding a wolf with the Trail of Crumbs than I do with the uh, Nylea activation. So I think I'll start by sacking a food token. And paying one. Just find some lands. Can play Dryads, which kind of pays for itself since I can play two lands. Activate Nylea. But then if I find a wolf, I wouldn't be able to play it. Nessie and Wanderer not finding any lands this time. And we'll pass and activate Nylea end of turn. Don't think I can afford to attack and let them hit me with uh, Lifelink and Cavalier of Knights. At least the Risen Reef is gone, so the Leafkin doesn't draw any extra cards. Ooh, God Eternal Ronos. Alright, well, glad we kept Nylea on defense. So we're just taking 8 instead of uh, 16. Thassa flickers Cavalier. Can sack the Leafkin Druids. And kill Dryad one more time. I think I still want to keep this food token in play. So I'll just activate Nylea instead of doing the Trail of Crumbs. Procedure. Not our trail of crumbs seems okay. So we'll sack a food token and we can pay two. There's a wolf. And probably take the Satessan Champion. So I can play both here. But I'm probably better off playing the wolf, sacking the food and paying two to the Trail of Crumbs. Target Shepherd. Gotta make sure to use the wolf to sack the food and not just sack the food. Spinner's fine. And another Dryads. Alright, so Shepherd down at least. Got enough devotion for Nylea to be a creature at the moment. Hopefully no Agent of Treachery. Another Shepherd instead. And Thassa can just tap down Nylea. So we're taking 9. Flicker Cavalier again. Probably takes out a Wicked Wolf. Now that we don't have any food tokens in play. Alright, time to play a champion and uh, draw some cards.
That's a swing and a miss. Take a cavern. So I've got two more food tokens. Second sack of food token, pay two, three mana left. Can also activate Destiny Spinner or Nylea, so I've got some options once again. Think I'll sack of food. Also don't mind gaining three here. Get a wolf, that's great. Pay one more. Get another cabin. And then I can play wolf again, taking out the shepherd. Although this time I won't have the mana to make use of the food we sacrifice, but that's alright. Probably still gotta stay back with Nylea. Force him to use mana from Thassa. Alright, a third Shepherd. Opponent's not running out. And a Neoform. Getting Risen Reef, which is gonna draw them more cards. Well, our deck is not great at answering Thassa. So we kinda need to answer their creatures. Which we've been doing so far, but to just keep uh, playing more Shepherds is a problem. At least they couldn't tap down Nylea this turn. Takes out Citizen Champion. So play Cabin. And I could sack it to the wolf. Of course, if I do the main phase, it's going to be tapped, which isn't great. Could just start activating Nalia a bunch. Could activate Spinner. How many enchantments do I have in play right now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I could make seven, seven lands. Those hit pretty hard. How much mana do I have total? 11. 15. Can play at least one more land. So I could potentially attack with three lands here, which would be seven power each. So that kind of forces my opponent to make some trades. I think I like that approach and then keep the wolf back on defense. Can also make it indestructible and use the mana on Trail of Crumbs potentially. Now I don't know if I want to send three lands or just two lands here. I guess I'm fine sending three. I guess it doesn't matter whether we send a cabin or a forest. So those can all attack. So my opponent's probably going to prioritize killing the Destiny Spinner now that they've seen what uh, the Spinner's capable of. So your opponent's down to four. Yeah, close game. Yarok the Desecrated, that's a scary card.
Uro gains six life here. Not what we wanted to see. And re-triggers once again with a Shepherd in play. That's a pretty sweet combo too. So up to 14. But now they did exile it, so... That probably means they have another Uro that they can play. Otherwise they would probably prefer to escape it. Alright, opponent was almost dead. Now they're all the way back to at least 20. Opponent's almost running out of cards over here. I guess both decks drew quite a few cards. And the third Uro. Yeah, all of a sudden we're pretty far behind. Opponent uh, accumulated a lot of resources that turn. That's what uh, Yarok tends to do. Merfolk Secret Keeper. It's a bit unexpected. Take four. And Cavalier's gonna take out some more creatures here. So Destiny Spinner gone. Nessie Wonder gone. So I could sack this food token end of turn, but I can only pay for one trail. So I think I untap. A land a draw. So we've seen parts of our deck. Probably gotta sack the food here. Alright, that's a bit of a miss. So we're out of food. Can activate Nylea. But even if I find a Destiny Spinner, I'm not gonna have enough mana to really leverage it. Champion the draw. Can keep a Trail of Crumbs on top. But I'm uh, pretty sure we're dead next turn. They're going to start tapping creatures with Thassa. Can tap at least one more. And with a the land they can tap all of them. And that's at least 10 damage coming across. GG's, close game. Alright, we're on the draw with uh, a keepable hand. Question is, do I play the cabin turn 1 or do I wait and hope to draw another forest along the way? Alright, I'll definitely wait now. 
we have plenty of options on turn two. Probably gonna lead with Haven to make more mana. And then next turn we can double spell two drops. Opponent on a Mardu Mayhem Devil deck. Mayhem Devil pretty good against us since whenever we sack a food token the Devil will trigger. So we want to try and find a Wicked Wolf as soon as possible to get rid of it. Could go Haven into Haven into another 2-drop. Spinner doesn't really block all that well. So it could be the trail to set up for next turn. Nightmare Shepherd, also a problem card, but there's Wicked Wolf right on time. So definitely gonna prioritize the Shepherd over the Devil now. And then we can pay one to the Trail of Crumbs too. Find another Haven, I guess. The more enchantments, the better the spinner's ability becomes. Playing spinner kind of protects us from a potential Angrass Rampage, making me sacrifice the Wicked Wolf. Fable Passage plus Mayhem Devil is also a combo. Goes after the Destiny Spinner, so they might be able to finish it off with damage this turn. Playcrafter. Uh, I'll sag the spinner. And a Stormfist Crusader. Alright, so we're taking some damage, but the wolf is still alive. So I could sack a food to gain some life and then pay one mana to the trail. Seems worthwhile. And then I'll probably just empty my hands. Strider plus Devil, pretty scary too. So we still don't know what the white is for in their deck. So far they could have been red-black. No attacks, we get to untap. And yeah, I guess we'll play a trail. How many enchantments do I have in play? One, two, three, four, five, six. Can make it seven. So the Destiny Spinner also doesn't mess around here. But I think this turn I would rather accumulate some extra cards through the Trail of Crumbs. They're going after the Goose. Find another wolf, that's excellent. And a dryad. So, just gonna play the wolf. Probably taking out Mayhem Devil. 
problem is if I sack one more food, they can take out the goose. But I guess they would sack to the worst rider in response anyway. So my goose is kind of doomed no matter what. So that's all right. Still gonna hang back, so we can potentially double block Crusader. But next turn we might start activating Destiny Spinner to close out the game. Another Strider. And a Playcrafter. Yeah, I think I'm sacking a Wicked Wolf. I think my Spinner's more valuable. So we'll play the Wanderer. Then I could play Nylea, then play Dryads to kind of maximize my mana. Although then I don't get to activate Spinner this turn, but maybe that's fine. Because, of course, Nylea makes her creatures one cheaper. And I'll probably pass a turn still. Can either sack the foods and activate Trail twice, or maybe activate Nylea. And then next turn, I might go for the spinner. It's gonna be Athreos, Shroud Veils. All right, so now we figured out what the white is for. Well, Athreos is pretty good. Although, not enough devotion this turn. So this is probably our best window to do some damage with uh, Destiny Spinner. End of turn, I think I'll go for Nylea. Another Dryads. So how much mana am I working with? Animate a land, can animate two lands. Opponent's got 6, 7, 8 toughness. This is 20 tramples, I think, if we send everyone, they're dead. Can sack the Dryad of Elysian Grove if the Playcrafter comes back, so we don't lose any attackers. And this does not shrink down the forests, since they become tantans when the ability resolves. And they're not going to shrink based on how many enchantments enter or leave the battlefield. Alright, sweet. So managed to beat Mardu's sacrifice. And we finally got to see what the white splash was for. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. We're lacking a card draw engine here. Something like a 
Trail of Crumbs or Sadas and Champion would be ideal. I'll take a Nassian Wanderer. Next turn, play a Dryad. Wicked Wolf is also great in this matchup. I'm gonna hold it since opponent's on the Cavalcade deck, so I wanna keep the Wicked Wolf to kill the uh, Chandra Spitfire, which is a very scary card. Alright, our Legion War Boss essentially deals one per turn here. Probably a fine target for Wicked Wolf. Still would prefer to save it for Spitfire, but I don't have a ton of other plays I can make. That's a miss. And I'll get in. The red deck basically won't be able to kill the Wicked Wolf here with two food tokens. And we can generate more with a Goose. Goose can also just help us gain life, which is pretty valuable against the red deck. Nice, Scampering Scorcher. Represents a bit of damage. I'll block the Tin Street Dodger with the Wolf, and of course can block two tokens as well. Now I could sack some food to the Wolf just to make it bigger so I can attack for more. Maybe I can afford to sack one, and then just attack with Wolf, keep dry it and wander on defense. Trail of Crumbs, excellent. Gingerbread Cabin. So really seeing the synergies here. So the wolf can attack. I could sack food. I think I'm gonna do that. Just to draw a card with the Trail of Crumbs. And I can still use the geese to uh, make more food if I want to. I'll take an Ilya. Alright, not a bad turn. Gotta watch out for Torbran, killing us out of nowhere. Can essentially deal 9 damage on this board. It's going to be a robber of the rich, but we're empty-handed. Opponent's still going to attack. An Amber Cleave to be expected. So they're gonna trade for the Dryads. And then end of turn, probably use the Wolf one more time. Find another Wolf. And that should be game over. Play the wolf, kill the spitter, attack with all, and that's 12 damage before we account for any food tokens. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a nice opening hand. 
Turn 2 Haven gives us access to turn 3 Wolf if we want it, but probably leading with the champion. And then we still have a Destiny Spinner to enable Constellation. If we're up against a Counterspell deck, we could also decide to play Spinner on turn 2. Edgewall Innkeeper. Yeah, I think I want to go Haven into Wicked Wolf here, take out Innkeeper as soon as possible. So it could be Teamer Adventures or Red Green Aggro Adventures. Teamer confirmed. Second Wolf is nice. So hoping we can uh, maybe draw another land so I can go Wander plus Champion next turn. Champion safe from the 2 damage stomp. Second Wolf could also take out a 1-1 one -one so the Lovestruck doesn't attack. Opponent passing, so this looks like they want to block and then stomp the Wicked Wolf, which we don't have to play into. They might be holding some other instance, like a Petty Theft or perhaps a Grow Spiral I've seen in these decks as well. And they're gonna bounce the Wicked Wolf. Not a play you want to make very often. Lucky Clover. But no fourth land. So yeah, let's uh, get this champion out of range of double stomp if we can help it. Cabin's great. Alright, no second enchantment sadly, but uh... Wicked Wolf still looks good. So it's going to be double stomp on the Citessen Champion. Weren't able to get it up to 5 toughness in time. Another spinner. How many enchantments do I have in play? Just a 2, can make it 3. Thinking about maybe activating the uh, ability on the spinner too. Alright, opponent packs it in. I guess they were just too far behind. Could get in a pretty big chunk of damage and then we still had another Wicked Wolf lined up to maybe take out another creature with Gilded Goose providing a steady stream of food tokens. This is typically a pretty tough matchup since the teamer deck can definitely go over the top of uh, most other strategies, but uh, lucky to have the early wolf to take out Innkeeper. And that's gonna be it for me today, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd. Thank you.